In this video, I'm going to walk through how I made my Yanmar 3GM30 engine monitorable through my electronics. Now, my electronics are a Raspberry Pi based, open plotter based DIY system. However, you could extend this to be NEMA 2000 as well. some components like this. This is a uh, what Fire Beetle ESP32E by uh, DF Robot. It cost me about $7, right? So it's pretty cheap. And what it is, is a little platform that you can program stuff to and uh, it'll, it'll run some simple programs. I also, as well as that, I bought an expansion board. So this board sits on top like here and allows you to, to uh, bring out all the, the I.O. that it's got on board. And now that was optional, didn't need to buy that one. I also bought um, boards like this, a, a little project board um, that I'm gonna use to be able to talk to it. Some diodes, I got a box of diodes. This is an example of those. Um, and then also some sensors, right? So this, this is a, what they call a BME, 280 and it's an environmental sensor it's temperature sensing pressure sensing and humidity sensing on top of that gonna need some diodes and uh, this is what we call a, a one wire temperature probe so it comes this particular one comes with a half a meter of, uh, of cable uh, and it's really got three wires power ground and a data line it's a digital system the one wire system and you can pretty much on the same pin put a bunch of, th of these and they you can, then you can put them anywhere in your engine bay or anywhere on the boat uh, to sense temperature i already have some of these on the boat already connected directly to the raspberry pi and uh, they're pretty good um, I, i've got w currently i sense the raw water coming in i also sense the cabin temperature the engine bay temperature and uh and the coolant temperature as well with these i'm going to do something similar to that i'm also going to sense things like the alternator temperature and uh oil temperature um uh, that will come in in a different video because the install will be a, a separate video so there there's the parts so you probably also need a box so a box like this a little project box it's all going to go inside here and then we're going to connect it to the boat um, screw it to the boat and it will all sit inside there. Uh, Sense ESP was set up um, by a team from the, the Signal K group um, in order to, to provide a, a toolkit for people to use uh, ESP32s to integrate them into, into their, um, their boat systems. There's a website here, and I'll put this in the right up below the video to get you to the right pages, but it should, tells you all about it. And there's also uh, pages of getting started. I've already done the, the sort of hardware side here. So the software is very straightforward. You basically have to use something like Visual Studio Code, which is downloadable for free, uh, and then add the platform IO to it. Now I've, I've already done that. And, Basically, it is it's pretty straightforward. This is the the environment uh, we're talking about. So walk through these instructions, and you'll be able to get to pretty quickly up to to speed with how to do it. It's pretty straightforward. There is a template on the on the web page that basically will get you up and running to a level that you can talk to the device, and the device can talk to Signal K, and you you can follow these instructions and go through that. Um, what I wanted to do is, is quite specific for the engine though. So I'm gonna show you what I did. Now we're gonna look at the different
different circuits that I've got involved. The first thing to think about here is the um, this power line. So I have a power cable here that comes in. This will just go to 12 volts and it comes in, it comes through here and it goes to this little power board and this power board drops the voltage down to five volts, which then goes out to this little plug, which once it's mounted, it, uh, this will plug into the device. Uh, and that's, that's how we get power to it. So we also fitted an I squared C environmental sensor. So this is the environmental sensor and it plugs into it plugs into the I squared C interface, which is power, ground, data, and clock. So there's four wires in there and you can see them attached like so. Um, it provides us with pressure, temperature, and relative humidity. I'm gonna put that in the engine bay so we can see those uh, characteristics. The code is in two parts. The first part is initialization uh, and it does some basic calculations. So here we are initializing the BME 280 and then we are reading the uh, temperature and adding 273 to it because the temperature comes in in, uh, in degrees C and we want it in Kelvin. We also read in the pressure and the humidity from the device. Second section of code picks up the, the device and then takes the values that we just set and then determines how often we want to take a, a reading from the sensor. Uh, so right now I've got the temperature sensor reading every five seconds, so 5,000 milliseconds, and then every 60 seconds the pressure and every 60 seconds the humidity. And then this section of code pushes it out into environment inside engine bay temperature, pressure, and relative humidity, which are signal K values, and they'll show up on the signal K bus. The next circuit over here is the yellow, orange, and the green wire. The green wire is a power wire. It comes in, goes through a resistor, and that resistor in this case is a 47 ohm resistor, and then it goes to this line here. Now the line here is this orange wire, that goes back to the sensing pin, and then uh, the yellow wire goes to ground. Now this yellow wire won't be there when it goes into the boat. What you'll, what you'll have there is a connection from this pin to the sensor, which is already on the boat, and that's a pressure sensor. Now this could just as easily be a temperature sensor because they're, they're very similar, which is uh, a different resistance depending on the pressure it's seeing, and then it basically goes to ground. So. Uh, what I'm doing by putting a ground on here and a resistor, I'm simulating that. Um, uh, so that's how I was testing the board. And the code for that, and that pressure sensor code here, um, basically what it does is it takes the input pin. So we define the input pin, pin 36, which is an analog zero. We then take that analog input and that analog input comes in as a bit, 10 bit system. So it's zero to 1024. We scale that using this analog voltage to make it into volts. And then we take that, do some calculation based on a voltage divider. And that's where you, you have to define the input voltage and you also have to define how, what size that resistor is. 47 ohms, that one is. So you can see in the code here, the constant flow resistor one, R1 is, is 47. The voltage that I was sensing on, on there, uh, measuring was about 3.45. So about 3.45. So we take those voltages and then out of that, so it'll calculate what the resistance is. Once you've got the resistance, you then need to work out what that is in pressure. Up here at the very top, we have a translator pressure interpreter. So this, this set of code here, what it does is it basically um, has data points and what the pressures are. So this one at 10 ohms, you're going to get zero pressure at uh, 184 ohms, you're going to get um, 10 bar, so or, or, or 1 million pascals, which is 10 bar. And then the last line here basically sends it out as propulsion, engine, oil pressure. And that will go out and, and you'll see that on the bus. The next circuit I've got in here is the RPM gauge and this this here is the is the RPMs. What 
will happen is that these two ports here are the input and they, they will come from the alternator. And as the alternator spins, it pulses onto one pin and we'll take that pulse and we'll read it here. And what we'll get out of it is on this side, we'll get a completely independent 3.3 volt high, low on off signal. And we'll use that to count uh, and work out what the RPM is. And the code associated with that is right here. So this is the application that describes the uh, counter. Here we set the pin, so it's on pin 16, which is digital 11. And then basically out of it, we get propulsion engine revolutions is what comes out of it. This data came from Matt at Boating with Baileys. I'll put a link to his channel as well. I used this code to start with and then I adjusted it accordingly. The actual piece of hardware that we're using here is an optocoupler. And these are available um, for, you can buy these quite, quite cheaply off uh, Amazon or anywhere like that. Um, so I can, I'll uh, put a link to that in the, uh, in the write-up as well. So first of all, this is the uh, ESP32 mounted. And you can see that, that these three wires here come off what we call digital two. So there's digital inputs, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six on this side, and then uh, some different numbers in the middle. And these three wires are the one wire circuit. So the one wire circuit is, is basically connected to these three sets of pins. And that's how I can have multiple um, uh, uh, sensors in there. Uh, the first side over here, this, this orange wire here, is the ground wire. The one in the middle is the power wire. And the one on the end is actually the data wire. So all the data items are going to be, be passed to that, that piece there. Um, if I connect up a one wire sensor to here, then, then uh, when the system is running, you, you'll see data coming from it. And let's take a look at the software, you know, the code associated with the one wire. Up our main.cpp. So what we've got is a, a section on one wire. Right here, you can see the start of the one wire temperature sensors and all this code basically is, is for each of the sensors. This first pin here basically says which pin it is. Now there's pin numbers and then there's digital output numbers. So you've got to change this number to correspond with the correct input that you've got it connected to. You know, each one of these sensors has a digital serial number. And as you can see, I've got code for five sensors here. The first time you plug one in, it will allocate that to the first one. I'm just going to plug them in one by one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect it up. Now, it's been connected up before, so uh, you, you'll notice in, if you read the documentation that it will it will basically want you to firstly determine what the Wi-Fi is. So you have to go in to the device directly and set the Wi-Fi. Now, I, I actually have a Raspberry Pi here that is a clone of what I use on the boat. So I've, I've used that to, to uh, be able to demonstrate all, all of this. We're going to plug it in. Uh, so we're going to plug it in here. It's a USB, so it won't go in first, second time. It's always the third. So now it's connected and it's, it's running. You can see the lights on here and it's just, it's just running. Uh, it should be a green light fl flashing and a red light. And in the code, if we, we can basically use monitor here and what will happen is it'll start running the monitor. So here you can see data coming through. And the problem with this is it's hard to see. You're looking at values and they're, they're changing all the time. It's very difficult to see. So the other thing is I have the Raspberry Pi. So what we've got is we've got here is all the data that I was talking about. So um, oil pressure, so it's showing you what the oil pressure is. Now, again, I'm using this resistor to, uh, to make a number up. Um, but also here I've got um, so RPM. Now, it, if I was to put a pulse on there, you'd see that, that changing. So since the last demo, I've installed all the pieces into the box. I changed my mind a little bit on how the one wire parts were going to be connected. They were going to be pushed onto pins, so that's how the board was laid out. That's what I had, had said previously. Um, but I decided to connect them all outside. This is power, ground, and then data. And then this area here is for the RPM sensor. And then this is the oil gauge. I use a resistor to 
uh, to simulate the pressure sender. Also, there is uh, the RPM here is just connected to ground. I just need the positive here to get the RPM. I've also got the environmental sensor, so that's now plugged in and everything's quite nicely fits inside this box. So it looks like that. And then I drilled a hole in the side of the box to, um, uh, in order to, to get the wires out. This one here, I'm not, I haven't decided exactly. I'm probably going to put it through another hole in the other side, or, or maybe try and squeeze the, these four wires through the, the main one, but this is going to be outside. Otherwise it's going to be just reading the temperature inside the box. But for now, we're going to leave it out here and just close this, this two. So that's the box. Um, if you look at the screen, so to make it a little bit easier, I decided to create um, a kip window that, um, that had the gauges so we could see just the devices from here. So if I take the environmental sensor and if I breathe on it, there you go. So you can see that changes uh, as I do that. Uh, oil temperature is, is the one wire sensor. So if I grab the one wire sensor, uh, you sh that should change also. Um, my hands are pretty cold. I I've just been for a walk outside and it's, it's basically 30 degrees outside. The, uh, the oil pressure is connected to this, this resistor here. So it shouldn't, it won't change. It's, it's a fixed value and the RPM is not connected up. Uh, but this is what it's going to look like on the boat. That's the end of the demonstration. Please like, and subscribe. If you've got any comments, put them in the comments below and I'll answer any questions. Uh, the next video will be about the install on the boat. Thank you.